is stuff I would never have <laughs> okay. oh, that's gotten to. Yeah. Staying across the fence, we visit a Vermont hog farm to learn the economic, science, and social aspects to raising pigs on pasture. We'll meet a swine specialist who's helping Vermont farmers get a leg up on the competition. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. One of the biggest challenges for farmers is when they want to diversify or expand their business in order to meet demand. For a small farm to increase in size by 20 or 30 animals means changes to the overall management of the farm. Farmers often rely on their own resourcefulness, but it is always helps to have a different and experienced set of eyes to look at things and let you know that you're on the right track. Across the fences, Keith Silva was in East Hardwick to meet the teacher and the student. Even on the hook, these pigs are in demand. We do five farmers markets a week and I cannot keep bacon and pork chops on the shelf. Grass farmer first and then and then everything on top of that. Ben Notterman and his parents, Helm and Nancy, run Snug Valley Farm in East Hardwick. The farm specializes in grass-fed beef and pastured pork. With the demand for local food continuing to increase, Ben is looking to go whole hog. So to speak. A lot of other markets, there's not a lot of good pastured. I mean, there's some very good stuff, but there's not enough. So I want to try to fill that, fill that void. This is a, a learning process, learn as I go. Kind of some of it, seat of the pants, but uh, I'm learning. For every farmer in the midst of an expansion, necessity is the mother of invention. It also helps if a nationally renowned swine specialist is in the area and stops by for a consultation. I mean, a severe parasite infection would set you back months. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they wouldn't reach the market weights. They, they'd just be infected. And then the other reason is the animal suffering. And, and I don't think we, we obviously don't want that. And so, uh, Dale Roseboom so is an extension professor at Michigan State. Well, so His visit to Vermont is sponsored by the University of Vermont Extension's Center for Sustainable Agriculture and NOFA Vermont, the Northeast Organic Farming Association. In Vermont, there is potential, great potential, and not that you're going to, Vermont's going to become a major hog producer. Nope, wrong place in the country. But can Vermont produce pigs? Surely. And it's, it's, a, man, it, it's a matter of determining um, each farmer how much they can contribute to that uh, in the number of hogs, how they can do it so it's economically viable for them. What I see is farmers with some excellent animal skills. I mean, as far as taking care of them. I see uh, concern for the health and the well-being of the animals, concern about talking about uh, vaccination programs. Do I need something to deworm pigs, um, to maintain their health and their well-being? Uh, and, and I see farmers doing, uh, taking strides to learn and, and want to improve. Um, I see farmers utilizing resources very well. In addition to visits to several hog farms, Roseboom is giving lectures and holding workshops on swine management. His approach to agricultural management is clear cut. Farm with what works best. It's not that one system fits all. It's that each system finds out what works best for itself. And I think that's the fun part about being here in Vermont and working with Vermont farmers is given this set of resources, given this set of abilities and skills and combining that with my other demands, I might be a dairy farmer too. How can I raise pigs and do it right? And I, and I, I just enjoy, uh, you know, helping find solutions and uh, for a given situation. No one situation has to be exactly the same and it isn't oftentimes. It really depends, it comes back to this topic of what breed of pig you're working with. And Roseboom so, um, advises farmers on genetics, nutrition, genetic and nutrient management. To make a lot Another topic that gets special consideration that, is what Roseboom calls will, the community uh, or social to aspect to of farming. We're talking then about raising pigs that meet the consumer's desired attributes. And so we'll talk a lot about genetic programs. Is this the correct breeding program to produce the pig that we want to produce? And here again, every farmer has a different set of customers. Some might be restaurants, some might be the farmer's markets, some might then be selling directly to a CSA, and others might just be the consumers around them in their neighborhood. And so um, we're trying to then match nutrition, match genetics, and match the environment they have, the, the farm, to produce those pigs most, again, most effectively for them. And then they know they've got a home for all of them and everybody's yeah. happy Couldn't and makes money. Couldn't have said it better. Couldn't yep. have said it better. 
Roseboom likes what he sees at Snug Valley Farm, especially when it comes to Ben's vision for the farm's future. Ben's thinking systematically. He's thinking about the whole process and how systematically he starts pigs, he feeds pigs, and, and then gets them to a, a desired weight for butchering. Man, he's, he's thinking. Uh, it's just fun to be around people that are like him, that are uh, thinking of not just tomorrow, but he's thinking five, 20 years down the road. He's a young man with just a lot of enthusiasm, and so it's just a, a joy. This is stuff I would never have gotten to. For Ben, the feeling is mutual. This is huge. This is a resource that I would never have been able to get my hands on or you know, talk to Dale. or It's just something that was out of my reach before, and I think it's really great. It's going to help us a lot. It's good information that will help these farmers and these pigs get to market. In East Hardwick, I'm Keith Silva with Across the Fence. I'm joined in the studio now by Jen Colby from the University of Vermont Extension's Center for Sustainable Agriculture and Sam Fuller, who works for the Northeast Organic Farming Association in Vermont, or NOFA for short. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Jen, why did your organizations partner together to bring Dale to Vermont? Well, actually, uh, the Center for Sustainable Ag and NOFA partner often on mm -hmm. many livestock events. We find that there's a lot of overlap in between um, farms who are just trying to do a better job and farms who are also go uh, along to organic certification, so it works well. Um, um, we brought Dale together because we really recognize that there's a lot of opportunity for swine production in Vermont um, and there's been an increase in growth of, of swine um, operations as well. And I think the other thing is that we um, in Vermont have this really robust um, farming culture but particularly around dairy and what we um, realize is that a lot of people who are coming into pork production are either transitioning from other agricultural practices are adding it to the diversified enterprises or even just being a new farmer. So um, we really see that um, there's this huge need for um, information from these different re parts of the country that have focused on swine production. So bringing in people from Michigan or taking mm -hmm. Vermonters um, to other places is really valuable to kind of increase that knowledge base of our pork producers. And so how is Dale's visit different from other visiting specialists and workshops that you've had? So typically we've done this structure where we bring in someone from outside with new ideas and new information or specialization and they do a workshop or they do a, two workshops on, on successive days. This time we did a different structure where we offered um, technical assistance, direct technical assistance for multiple days. So Dale visited 10 farms in yep. four days um, and did a workshop in the middle. Uh, all of the farmers he, was visit he visited in person also came to the workshop, so clearly there was a lot of information to, to be gained. Can you tell me some of the information, give me some examples of some of the things that he mentioned that these farmers need to know about raising pigs? Well, I think, um, once again, since it's kind of a, it's a newer endeavor for many people, there's just kind of um, basic, un, um, nuanced information that people just aren't exposed to. So anything from talking about um, production practices, um, and parasite management, land management, um, but also because in Vermont grain prices are so high, one of the things a lot of people are exploring is alter alternative feed, so whey feeding, spent grain feeding, so um, just having someone who can come and kind of quickly kind of share, f you know, 45 years of experience on different production practices is hugely valuable. Mm. And two, uh, you know, each farm, as he mentioned, is different. Totally. So that's a, new, that's a huge challenge. <laughs> totally. Yeah. That's the benefit of having that one-on-one -on -one technical assistance. You can go to a workshop, you can get good basic information, but then having a really experienced set of eyes come and look and, and be able to ask those very specific questions is, I think, the extra step. Sam, doesn't NOFA just work with organic farms? Um, no, NOFA, um, we um, work with certified organic producers, transition producers, and other people using sustainable and innovative practices. Um, but we have a long history of working with farms with um, that are community-based agriculture so um, we really value working with both our certified producers but also many of the other great farmers who um, are exploring different practices to kind of raise pigs in a kind of economically and ecologically sustainable way. Do we know much about pig farming in Vermont? What, how many people are growing pigs, do we know? Right, so according to the 2011 Ag Census, there were about 260,000 pigs, hogs, in, mm -hmm. in Vermont, which represented about $700,000 in, uh, in income. Um, so it is one of the smaller production systems in Vermont in terms of volume. Um, 
But the, the interesting thing when we run workshops is we meet people continually who we don't think are on the radar. There, there are more people, we, we believe that there are more people raising pigs out there than are being currently tracked. So we've begun to put together a database of the people that we know just to try to create a little bit greater connection between them. There's no swine association, um, so it's not really an organized thing at this point, and, and we're not sure how many there are, but we're going to find out. Why is this growing in popularity? I think um, that's a lot of different uh, factors together. I think that the advent of new opportunities with distillers greens and brewers greens and whey with all the other industries in Vermont that are starting to increase, but also there's this there's this consumer demand. There's the per I mean, there are still many, many backyard um, hog producers of two or three pigs for their family or for neighbors. Mm -hmm. The change in the new slaughter regulation that allows for more um, on-farm slaughter. Those kinds of issues, they're all sort of coming together. That's kind of why this is an opportune moment. And so what kinds of issues came up in the course of Dale's work here in Vermont, Sam? Um, I mean, there was just many issues. Um, you know, housing is one. Um, we have we have obviously strong winters in Vermont, and so figuring out you know farrowing systems and how you actually keep you know the sows warm while they're raising their piglets. Um, that's a huge one that he kind of explored. Um, once again, the feeding. Um, you know, we are um, really challenged with feed prices and you know, pigs being monogastric consume a lot of grain. And so how can we in Vermont be innovative to really kind of lower food costs and create a distinct product? So mm -hmm. Vermont Wayfed Pigs is um, one of the farms we visited and they're exploring using um, this kind of waste stream from artisanal cheese production and incorporating it into pork production. So taking this great, you know, Vermont product, this, um, you know, whey, mm -hmm. and then feeding it to pigs and kind of creating this artisanal product. So, um, but that's very challenging. How do you actually handle the whey? How do you um, feed out the whey? How do you finish the whey? How do you get these pigs so they um, reach the high quality but still have the values that they're, um, that mm -hmm. they're produced with? And how about mm -hmm. environmental conditions too, as far as managing pigs? So we and we did see a range when we, on the farms that we visited, and it's a really good you know it's a really good um, uh, indication of some of the challenges that we have. As you may have noticed in the video, pigs have a really excellent ability to root, <laughs> and fa many farms use them for for reclamation mm -hmm. um, purposes. Uh, you know, some of the questions are how many pigs are appropriate on an on a per acreage basis. Mm -hmm. We saw a variation with Ben for sure, um, and he was doing a really excellent job. Um, so s the environmental conditions are going to, you know, taking away vegetative cover is going to allow for some more soil erosion. So how do we manage that? Um, you know, do we rotate pigs like we rotate cows? That's, some of those questions are things that we really need to look into here. And so where is this collaboration going to go next? We're already talking about <laughs> <laughs> several different projects that we, um, you know, grant proposals that we're interested in looking at to coordinate uh, some of those farmers a little bit better um, amongst themselves. Um, we were looking at some marketing things. Yeah, and I think also um, one continue to bring in um, expertise. We've also been trying to bring um, producers and processors out to other places in the country to expose them to systems in North Carolina or Quebec. Um, but I think most uh, most exciting is really um, how we have kind of integrated systems on pasture, so flash grazing, um, moving pigs quickly through areas, um, along with all this alternative um, feed production, and really thinking how we can produce these high quality pigs for these higher end um, markets to do um, charcuterie and other kind of um, value added processing. Uh, what are some of the biggest, do you think, challenges to raising pigs and, and growing that market? Um, it, that's kind of what we bumped into a bunch. There's the, there's the nutritional aspect. There's growing the right pig for the right market at a price that the farmer and the consumer can both afford. Um, definitely there are going to be some environmental limitations. Um, the winter is Yeah, is what happens a, in the winter time? Because the pigs can't get out, obviously. Well, they can get out in the snow. Actually, but pigs do very well out, outside mm -hmm. um, as long as they have um, some shelter and hay to nest in. Um, but there are definitely some challenges with farrowing outside. Mm -hmm. Some people do that, but not, not that many. Um, yeah. And I, <laughs> and I think, once again, one of probably the greatest challenges is um, we're kind of competing. Um, Vermont producers are competing against 
um, commodity pork, mm -hmm. um, which mm -hmm. is so much cheaper to produce. So I'm um, working on a small scale, doing things, um, you know, on a you know family farm. You're limited in terms of the cost of your production, and right. so I think that consumers still um, they're willing to pay a premium, but um, I don't know if they fully committed to what it takes to really supporting a robust kind of Vermont pork industry. Um, at the level it needs to be. Well, before we go, we want to pass along a couple of websites where you can get more information. The UVM Center for Sustainable Agriculture is on the web at uvm.edu slash tilde s-u-s-a-g-c-t. And you can also find the Northeast Organic Farming Association of Vermont by visiting nofavt.org. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you so much. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence. For a video copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-ATF-3430. Across the Fence is brought to you as a public service by University of Vermont Extension and WCAX-TV.